answer. So the last thing about energetics is um, experimental uh, calculating experimental heat energy of a reaction or enthalpy change of a reaction. So delta H of a reaction. Part experimentally. Achha, does anyone know from physics even or O levels, uh, how do you calculate heat energy? Like what is the formula of calculating heat energy? For example, there's a, Achha, there's a reaction that's going on in a beaker. Achha, so So there's some reaction going on. What, how do you measure the, uh, what is the first device that you need for that? You need a, you need a thermometer to measure temperature change. That's the first thing. So the thermometer is needed. And when you talk about the thermometer, it doesn't really matter okay, whether you uh, talk about it in degrees Celsius or uh, what you're interested in is delta T. Like how much is the temperature changing? The delta T is the same in uh, in Kelvin's or or Celsius. So you don't you don't need to do any conversion. What I mean by that is if, if there's a temperature change from 25 to um, 30 degrees centigrade. In Calvin's, you're going to have uh, the, I mean, if, if I convert both values into Calvin's, so 25 would be what, uh, 298? I said, if, if I add 273 to it, it's going to be 298. Uh, this is in Celsius. So it's going to be 298 Calvin's. And 30 would be equivalent to what? Uh, 27303 Calvin, sorry. So the delta T is the same. In both cases, you, you're going to get the same delta T, which is 5. So delta T over here would also be 5 degrees. So, so the first thing is uh, uh, no need for absolutely no need for conversion ah, but you have to be consistent like you're if you're dealing with centigrade you can't just switch to calvin's okay? or if you're dealing with calvin's just stay in calvin's so either solve the whole question in calvin's or solve the whole question in centigrade but there's no need for converting between the two okay that's about the meter. One thing about the thermometer is that uh, that uh, if there's a rise in temperature, is it exothermic or endothermic? If, if there's a rise in temperature, is it exothermic or endothermic? Exothermic. Yeah, that's exothermic. That means the reaction is producing a lot of heat and that heat is being absorbed by the... So the thermometer basically measures the heat of the surrounding. So, rise in temperature, that means uh, the thermometer is absorbing heat that is coming from the reaction. So, so it's going to be exothermic. And make sure you use a negative sign for energy. It's going to be negative kilojoules, TK. And vice versa, if there's, a, if there's a drop in temperature. So, in that case, it's going to be endothermic. And it's going to be plus. As a plus, other things as well. That uh, uh, one thing about doing experiments is you have to prevent for accuracy. You would have to prevent heat loss. So for for accurate results, and this time around, you will have your practicals most likely. So for accurate results, you got to prevent heat loss.
the number of, number of ways uh, of doing that um, uh, you can have an insulating jacket ki ya phir use a styrofoam cup because styrofoam is a is a is an insulator one way to prevent heat loss is uh, is uh, put a lid on top as to prevent heat loss uh, into the air acha aur kya ho sakta hai then you have uh, uh, that's pretty much it if you, if you're heating it uh make sure that the heat law uh, uh these are these and these are one and two that's that's about it okay that i no need to go into that much detail you won't be asked a very detailed question on this okay bas woh hai ke you'll get a question how can you make the readings more accurate just prevent heat loss theek okay? hai give them one or two reasons how you could uh, how you could actually do that as i was talking okay, how do i measure uh the energy that is produced in this solution kya physics pe kya formula tha for for measuring a uh, heat energy does even know mc delta t uh, m that's exactly so if got q is equal to it's 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 equal to it's um i mean you can use mc delta t t q is equal to mc delta t the sign of this thing you're going to decide yourself i mean you can uh either take it as plus or minus it, it depends on um, whether it's exothermic or endothermic so you can you can come up with the sign yourself meri was clear aadi Yes, sir. So it's MC delta T, and that's the formula. That's it. Okay, so you have your you have your formula. Uh, you you already know how to calculate delta T, right? So that is known. I said MC delta T. Delta T we already figured out, right? Uh, that is the change in temperature. Now, uh, now it. Its kind of sign, you know, it's it's irrelevant. You can come up with the sign yourself. Uh, change, you know, it's a change of five. Uh, if it goes from thirty to twenty-five or twenty-five to thirty, it's it's a change of five either way. Uh, if it's decreasing, dropping, then it's going to be plus. It's uh, or it's, if it's increasing, it's going to be exothermic. So you can come up with the sign. and you can measure delta t yourself uh c is the specific heat capacity of the solution as i remember because you're measuring the temperature of the solution so it's the specific as it's the specific heat capacity of the solution as a what are all solutions made up of like in chemistry most solutions what are they made up of like if i if i have a salt solution if i have any which aqueous if i have hcl aqueous you get so 99% of that solution is basically just water like if i say i've got nacl aqueous then i i don't basically have nacl i, I basically have water with a small amount of nacl in, in it right so whenever we refer to solution solutions are basically just water so the approximation or or the assumption is that all solutions are 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 mostly water right and the specific heat capacity for that is 4.18 joules per gram per kelvin then if for water to uh, rise by 1 kelvin or 1 centigrade like 1 gram of water it needs 4.18 joules of energy so so whenever you see a solution think of it as water that's it i said then 
there's M. M is going to be the mass of the solution. Now, since we are assuming that all solutions are water, so water ki mass kya hoti hai? Water has a density of one. So the volume of water is the same as the mass of water. Like if you've got 100 cm cube of water, uh, water, remember, has a density of one. So it its mass is 100 grams. The mass of solution is equal to the, is equal to the volume of solution. Because the assumption is that all solutions are are mostly water, are made up of mostly water. So, so if something is 100 cm cube, its mass would be equal to 100 grams. Okay, don't clear these two assumptions. Remember this. Okay, in chemistry, when you do Q is equal to MC delta T, remember this. Clear? Yes, sir. That's simple. So that's... That's kind of about it. It's MC delta. All you have to do is two questions now. So just remember MC delta T, uh, uh, all solutions are mostly water. So the mass would be equivalent to the volume. And plus the answer to this is going to be in joules. It's not going to be in kilojoules. Okay, this Q is being calculated in, in joules. So you have to be careful about the unit as well. Uh, so that is also important. So we're going to start doing questions on this. Okay, most questions are just straightforward questions. You just have to have to apply Q is equal to MC delta T, and that's about that's about it. So you ask like a start, kare. So where's the worksheet this one? I see EB may make us have sent this on the group as well. So we have the worksheet in front of us. So uh, starting with the first question. As the first question reads and that in an experiment to calculate the enthalpy change of combustion of a fuel, 1.5 grams of the fuel was used to heat 200 grams of water. So I've got, what I've got is, I've got 200 grams of water, right? And he's saying that 1.5 grams of the fuel was used to heat this. So he's heating it. And it's 1.5 grams of the fuel. And you've been given the moles of the fuel as well. That's uh, 0 0.0326 moles. I said the temperature of the water rose from 25 to 55. So that's, uh, what is delta T over here? That's, uh, delta T is uh, 30. Yeah, that's 30. Uh, and the specific heat capacity. So first thing, how much heat energy went to the water? That's uh, MC delta T. So that's uh, 200. And you're given the specific uh, heat capacity as well. That's 4.18. 
टाइम्स थर्टी तो वट वी गेट कितना बना है ठीक है So it's minus two five zero eight zero, and it's going to be in joules. Remember that, ठीक है? Make sure it's going to be in joules. So he's saying there's significant heat loss. Therefore, the experimental value for the enthalpy change of combustion of the fuel will be different from the theoretical value. So that is the amount of heat energy that is produced by this fuel that went into the water, right? I said enthalpy change of combustion for how many moles is this? यहाँ पे it's point zero three two six moles of the fuel. produce this much energy right so what is the amount of energy that's going to be produced by enthalpy of combustion remember is for one mole so you you'll just use ratios give me 0.0326 moles they produce a uh, minus 25 080 so how much energy would be produced by one mole of the fuel So just use simple ratios and find out uh, the enthalpy of combustion of the fuel. Uh, sir, the big answer minus seven sixty nine. It seems the right answer. Like it's minus seven sixty nine. Just take a guess. Take it. So yours is minus seven sixty nine, and you have to convert it into kilojoules. You can remember the standard, the standard form of the answer, the standard unit unit that's used is kilojoules. It gets not joules, but this this actually gives values in joules. So here, that's the first one. As a pair, let's do the next one. There's it's a it's a similar question that point four seven grams of a hydrocarbon was completely burnt in air. The energy released heated two hundred grams of water. So it's it's the same question. There's uh there's two hundred grams of water. And you're burning a fuel, right? So the energy is going to the fuel. The energy released two hundred grams of water from, uh, and the temperature rose from twenty three point seven to forty one. So, Kaya, yeah, what's what's delta T? Seventeen point three. Seventeen point three. Yeah. So this time he's only asking for the amount of energy that is absorbed by the water. So it's two hundred grams. Because that's the mass of water, four point one eight into seventeen point three. So it's going to be C, right? So our question is, he's just simply asking for what is the energy that went into the water? That's m delta t and multiplied by C. Okay, that's about it. Clear? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So next one. Um. Uh, again, it's a, it's exactly the same question, but this time is. Is given you as experimental data. That's uh, how much of the heat energy produced by burning of methanol went into the water. So, so you have to figure out m for water over here. Okay. So, what? How do you figure out the m for water based on this table over here? What mass of water? Ki? Should it be one hundred grams? Okay. So that's going to be one hundred grams because. Uh, You're going to use the last two. Your mass of glass beaker plus water and mass of glass beaker. You just subtract the two. You'll get hundred grams. Uh, C is going to be four point one eight. You have to just remember that. Uh, or what is delta T in this case? Thirty three. Yeah, that's uh, that's thirty three. So fifty three minus twenty. So. As a, and remember, you don't need the mass of the alcohol or anything because he's just asking for okay, how much of the energy went into the water. So you're just interested in what's happening over here, not in, not interested in what's what's going on over here. Okay? 
So Q is equal to MC delta D, that's 100 times uh, 4.18 times 33. So what do we get? 13794. 13? 13794 B. <clears throat> so, uh, I said this one. And now in this one, what is happening is okay, there's a. Uh, I said, remember when you. This is what's happening. You you're doing a reaction. You've got these two tiny beakers. And both solutions are being mixed, right? So he's taking 25 CMQ or 0.35 mole per DMQ of NaOH. So there's one beaker that contains NaOH. And it has a volume of 25 CMQ. And there's another beaker which contains a hydrochloric acid. And that has a volume of 25 CMQ as well. Okay, so there's this other beaker containing HCl, and that is also 25 cm cube. As I remember, when you mix the two solutions, uh, so this is the final solution. And you're saying that the temperature rose by 2.5. So we know the delta T over here. That's uh, when you mix them together, delta T, the temperature rose by 2.5. And it's rising. So, that, so you're going to have a negative sign. It's exothermic. Uh, Abhizar, what is the what is the final volume of the solution? This final volume. Fifty. It's going to be fifty. Remember this. Because when you mix mix solutions up, the final volume is the total volume of the two solutions. Twenty five or twenty five by mix here, so you're going to get a so the final solution is going to have a volume of fifty cm cube, which basically means that the mass is going to be fifty grams. And uh, we know the specific heat capacity, that's 4.18, right? So use Q is equal to MC delta T. So it's going to be 50 times uh, 2.5 times uh, 4.18. So what, what are we getting for this? Five twenty-two point oh eight. So you're gonna minus five twenty-two. Yeah, minus five twenty-two point five. So minus five twenty-two point uh, four eight. Yeah. Okay. Point five, sir. So he get juice, right? Now he's asking for the molar enthalpy change. Now molar enthalpy change is for one mole. So you have to figure out how many for how many moles was this for? How many moles of HCl did you use? Or any way did you use? Like moles is concentration times volume. So point uh 0.75. it's gonna be point three five zero times uh twenty five divided by thousand. Yeah. Okay. Eight point seven five into ten to the power minus three. As so this enthalpy change and uh, HCl has the same moles. So molar enthalpy change is for one mole. So basically used uh for eight point seven five times ten power minus three moles of HCl or any which they remember the reactant one ratio one. So for these many moles of uh, HCl or NaOH, uh, you're getting the energy that is produced is minus 522.5. So what is the energy that would be produced for one mole? So what, what would you get? Uh, is it minus 1.674 into 10 to the power minus 5? That's what I'm getting. No, minus, it's going to be minus 5. Uh, what would it be? Minus 522? 
Oh wait, wait, wait. I did something. Divided by Emmet or Rafika or Yes, sir. I'm getting minus nine thousand seven fourteen this time. Minus with the nine? Three nine thousand seven fourteen. So so minus sixty thousand, right? Yeah, I guess. So minus 60 kilojoules per mole. And B is going to be your answer for this one. I see, so 4.18 ni lena tha, he, he was taking 4.20. So if you had taken 4.20, then uh, you would have gotten exactly minus 60. I say, anyways, this one. Uh, this is a similar question, very similar TK. I say, let's try and do uh, this one. You're getting, you're getting uh, uh, in, a, in an experiment, 1.6 grams of the fuel is burned. So this is what's happening, that uh, 1.6 so grams of the fuel is burnt, right? And 45% of the energy is absorbed by 200 grams of water. So there's 200 grams of water that's sitting on top. But only 45% of the, the rest of the 55% got wasted. And the water rose from uh, the delta T is given. That's uh, 18 to 66. So what is delta T? Is it 48? That's it. That's it. So it's, it's 48. And the heat capacity is given 4.2. Take it, don't take 4.18. So what is the total energy released per gram of the fuel burnt? So first thing, first thing is, what is the energy that is absorbed by the water? That's uh, Q is equal to uh, 200 times uh, 4.20 times uh, 48. What is the energy that is absorbed by the water? 40,320. So we're getting 40,000. 320 joules. So the next part is because now he's not he's not asking for the energy that is absorbed by the water. He's basically asking for the energy that is released by the fuel. How much energy is absorbed by the water? That's 45%, right? But the fuel toast is other produced karata. 45% of the energy that is released by the fuel that goes into the water is this energy, 40,300. 20 joules. Is that clear? Because the water only absorbs. Sure. So what is the 100% energy that is released by the fuel? So use ratios and you figure out what would have been the 100% energy that would be released by the fuel. Okay. Yeah. Option C. Because that would, so. so that would give you 89,600, right? Yes. I said, plus then you missed one thing, which is that uh, this amount of energy is released by what amount of fuel? 1.6 grams, right? He's not asking for 1.6 grams. He's asking for per gram. This is the last part. Uh, uh, this is the amount of energy that is released by 1.6 grams. So what would be the per gram energy? It's going to be 89,600 divided by 1.6. Uh, 56,000. I guess it's going to be B. Do you just make sure, okay, especially in MCQs, that uh, don't, uh, if you see an answer, it doesn't mean that's the answer, TK. Uh, most people actually for this question, they just stop at 89,600. And they actually ignore that it's for, I mean, they're asking for per gram. Because certain questions can be like, uh, you have to pay very close attention to the detail. Clear here? Yes, yes sir. Baki, this one is also kind of similar. It's uh, most of these are, uh, I say here's a theory question. As you can try, uh, I've sent this worksheet, TK, I'm sending it again. Send me uh, the solution to this, uh, to these theory questions. Take all of them, and we can go over them. Uh, if there's other need, there's just two, three questions. Take so I'm I'm sending you the worksheet. 
अभी and we can go with them in the next class ठीक है इसमें इसे save कर लें तो